<laughs> nice. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, welcome to uh, another uh, Table Talk video. I know it seems like recently I'm just uh, cranking these out like you read about, but uh, they are, we're getting very close to the uh, Christmas holiday silly season here, so before I uh, get to a point where I'm in a food coma for a couple of days from eating too much food and uh, being spoiled rotten by uh, Santa Claus, I, uh, I wanted to do uh, uh, get as many of these out of the way uh, now before I'm on a bit of a break. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about, this is the uh, RC Timer FR2205-2550 uh, quad motor, quad racing motor I guess, um, which uh, was the star of the show and all of those, uh, those high speed passes there that, uh, that we started off with. So um, I'm going to be talking, if you found this video uh, looking for a review or uh, um, details about using this in a quad, uh, I'm going to be talking about using it in a foam park jet, which is essentially one of these bad boys. Uh, this, this one was uh, the star on the very last high speed pass. I've actually got another RC Timer quad racing motor um, in here uh, right now that I'm testing. Uh, slightly larger 2306 2650 which uh, on my channel I have some video of that so uh, anyway if again if you're looking for quad application uh, I won't be discussing that but you're more than uh, more than welcome to to stay and uh, and hang out so um, one of the reasons why I about seven months ago and I'm not I'm certainly not a groundbreaker here because other people have been using these quad racing motors and park jets uh, long before me, uh, but primarily in a, like a two motor uh, setup, either uh, you know two two motors sort of set in the wing somewhere or two in the back, uh, you know on the on the elevons. Um, so I wanted to see, you know, I started doing a bunch of research and uh, you know looking at some motors and potentially uh, seeing, you know, well maybe I can find one that can crank out enough thrust to make my park jet fly okay. And the main, one of the main things I was looking at is weight savings. Like this is the 2212-2600 uh, kV motor, which, you know, I did another video on this. It's what I sort of call a park jet workhorse, uh, you know, the most popular motor in, uh, in park jets. This, this motor with, you know, once you put all the prop and the hardware and everything on it, and you put it in your plane, weighs about 67 grams. And this motor weighs about 44 grams so there's a 23 gram saving uh, right away um, just um, on the motor now I'm going to discuss the numbers these are not this is not quite as efficient but it is a higher kV it's 2550 this is 2200 but you can see there's a you know also a significant uh, difference in size hopefully you can see there uh, I will have a blog post uh, uh, linked down below supporting this video where I'll have some pictures uh, and more details and uh, any lessons learned or anything that I didn't cover in this video will be there as well. I've already written another uh, blog post on my initial lessons learned and thoughts about selecting and building a plane to get the maximum performance uh, out of one of these little quad racing motors. Uh, this is probably the lightest uh, and least powerful one that I've tested out of the three I've tested so far. Um, it is very, it's really, works really, really well. It's strong and smooth, but there are, you know, there are some limitations uh, based on its physical size, which I talk about more in that blog post, which will be linked down below. Okay, so uh, you get this motor. Uh, the, the, the wires, this one, I left the wires, they're about uh, just over seven inches long. So you get some hardware uh, with it. You get, you know, these four... Uh, comes in this little package here. You get four bolts that you know you'd use to mount it on a quadcopter, and a couple of these, a uh, couple of these nuts. I, you know, I, I think here in Canada we call them nylock. They've got that sort of nylon thing inside that you know you can tighten them down with, uh, you know, with the proper size wrench. Um, one thing, if you're going to experiment with quad racing motors, and uh, like I, I just use these little bullet nuts. Uh, instead of those nuts because you know I, I have tons of these laying around uh, that go on the prop connectors of most of the motors that I use and I actually found this little um, this little tool I think this is made by Relac yeah. and uh, I got this on Banggood but I don't think they sell it there anymore but I did find one very very similar on Hobby King so I'll post a link to that uh, down below and in the blog 
Um, one thing you'll note is that they come, some of them are sold in clockwise or counterclockwise uh, thread um, for, uh, for use in quad motors. So I, I'll, the ones that I've ordered, I've got several on the way for testing. I've always made sure that I've ordered the clockwise ones so that when I thread the nut on, it turns clockwise to, uh, to tighten it down. Um, one thing I've also learned is, uh, you know, when I'm tightening on the prop, even if I was going to be using uh, one of these, because they're a pretty small motor and it's kind of hard, you know, especially if you've got big sausage fingers like me to get a grip on it, is this is just a chunk of, a, you know, a cheap rubber sponge that I got at the dollar store. So what I do is, you know, even if I'm use in my plane or just putting the prop on before I put it in a plane, is I just use this little bit of rubber sponge. It helps give me a, a really firm grip on the can and uh, you know then I'm not uh, uh, as prone to do damage to either my hand or to my plane if I'm changing a prop in it in my plane. So I you know I have a couple of chunks of these one one here on the bench and uh, one in my flight box at the field. So again just a uh, you know cheap rubber sponge from the from the buck store uh, works uh, super great. Um, so the one another thing to watch for uh, this is a standard X mount. Uh, for park jet motors, it uh, it has a 19 uh, 19 millimeter 16 millimeter bolt pattern, and fortunately the the threads uh, and the little screws that come with these when you buy them fit into these little uh, quad racing motors just fine. Now, now you want to be careful. There's a, quite a bit of a gap here, so I've got lots and lots of space. Uh, the screws go up through the base just a tiny bit, but there's still probably Oh gosh, five or six millimeters anyway before the bottom of the stator, so no problem at all. So just be careful, you know, if you've got some screws laying around, don't use just any old screw. Uh, I would use the screws that come with these mounts, and I'll have links again down below and in the blog post where you can buy these little X mounts because they obviously don't come with them. Uh, the other thing they don't come with when you buy them is these little uh, male, uh, these are just 3.5 millimeter uh, bullet connectors. You know, um, I've got lots of those around. You know, we normally buy them in uh, in packs because you know normally you put the female ones on your speed controller and uh, and not always because you know like these motors, most park jet motors come with the connectors already on, but for these ones obviously they don't. So just again, don't th ever throw any of those away. So you need to put your own on. Um, I'm going to talk just briefly about these wires. Why I left these wires on here. Uh, I have about three of these now. Uh, I've been testing them for about seven months. And the, the first one, I actually cut the wires short, uh, just, you know, just like I do on most of my motors. But um, in most of my plane setups, I like to have my speed controller uh, fairly far forward so I can kind of slide my battery back uh, as, as far back as it'll go and as close to the CG. Because this, this in most of my planes is one third or more of the total weight of my plane. So the further back and closer to the CG center of gravity I can have this battery the better even if it's only another you know quarter of an inch or so. So what I do is I, I, I'd rather have my lighter speed controller further forward. So I use these three, these are like three inch uh, ESC extensions. I buy these ready made from, uh, <coughs> pardon me, from Hobby King but um, you know you could also make your own with appropriate wire and, and uh, female and male bullet connectors. But these are a lot, you know, you stick these two together, these are much heavier than just leaving uh, the extra bit of wire on the quad racing motor. Um, so if you get once, you know, once I get this thing set up and I get it in my plane and I sort of figure out where my speed controller is going to go to balance my plane, if I've got, you know, a bunch of slack wire, what I don't want it to have happen is it, you know, it gets out and then interferes with the prop. So all I'll do is sort of once I figure out how much I do need, is I'll just uh, you know kind of fold it over a little bit and then put, just put a little uh, tiny zip tie around there just to keep it nice and neat and keep it from going back out into the prop because this is lighter than a combination of these plus you know a shorter wire plus again more bullet connectors here so uh, that that seems to have worked out really really well for me. Um, okay, uh, I'm not going to talk uh, too much about. Uh, Again, the selection of the plane and, you know, my lessons learned that way. There's, there is, uh, as I mentioned before, I've already got a blog post that I've written on that. Um, but I'm, right now I'm just going to talk about some of the props. In those, um, those sort of high-speed passes there in the intro, I actually ran um, these three props. 
Uh, these two APC, one's a, a 6x4 electric, the other one's a 6x4 gas, and this uh, master air screw 6x4x3. Now I have flown it, this is a, an RC Timer uh, electric sport prop in uh, 6x3. <clears throat> I have flown it with this, but I, I haven't shot any video with it. This, um, this prop draws about 26.4 amps, kicks out 880 grams, 31 ounces on the bench. Um, so it's the most efficient of all the props, but I don't, I wouldn't think, I wouldn't, if I was to evaluate its field performance, I don't think you're getting, um, the, you know, that full 31 ounces of thrust. It doesn't have, uh, it certainly has no better top end. It's probably comparable top end to this 6x4 uh, APC electric, and this is actually a knockoff from Hobby King, which I'll talk about briefly. Um, the main advantage to using this prop is that because it's a three pitch and it's actually a slightly longer, it's slightly longer than six inches where these two are just a shade under six inches. Um, you're going to always going to get a better hole shot with this. So if you are looking for a flight experience where, you know, you, uh, you like to fly along slow and then just hammer the, the juice to it and you're looking for that explosive hole shot, you're probably better, this is probably a good choice of prop for you because this is going to give you the best hole shot of all the props uh, that I'm going to talk about. So 6x3 electric uh, from RC Timer, plus it's the most efficient. Most of the other ones are all pulling 27.5 amps or more, so uh, this, this is going to be slightly more efficient based on what I saw on the bench, plus uh, you know checking my batteries after flying the amount of juice that's left in them. So uh, good choice there again if you want the hole shot. This is the uh, the Hobby King uh, 6x4 APC uh, knockoff, essentially. Uh, you know, this is probably one of the most popular props in all of park jets. Uh, they're inexpensive. Uh, I should say these are also very inexpensive. I bought I bought these in packs of five from RC Timer for I think about 450 US, so well, I guess 90 about 90 cents a prop, pretty cheap. Um, these are you get uh, two of them for less than two bucks from Hobby King. Uh, you know, pretty decent all-around prop actually. Um, not as good a hole shot as the uh, as the six x three electric or the yeah the six x three from RC Timer. And and here's you know an interesting thing like the, the bench numbers on this thing, it's pulling uh, on this motor it's pulling 28 amps and the bench numbers are actually quite abysmal. It's like 23.7 uh, ounces, 671 grams. So it's one of these things where you know I often not all the time, but regularly enough, uh, you know, I test a prop on the bench and I think, oh, those numbers, you know, it's going to be, it's going to work like complete garbage at the field, but it actually operates, works pretty darn well. So, you know, if you're wanting to experiment like this and you don't want to go spend a lot more money, extra money on these other props I'm going to talk about, this, this is definitely a good choice. I think in the very first pass that I did, at the very start, the plane I was flying, I was using this this type prop here. So, <clears throat> decent all-around prop. Um, not as good an acceleration as the the six x three, and not as good a top end as the next two props I'm going to talk about. But very very usable. Uh, I, I should mention all the two bladed props I'm going to talk about are all pulling less than 30 amps, and I've run them uh, even through the summertime when the weather's been warmer. Uh, with a 30 amp speed controller, no problem. You know, speed controller comes out a bit warm, but it's not, you know, anything that, uh, you know, you're going to be frying an egg on. So it, uh, it's just fine to use a 30 amp speed controller with the two bladed props. Uh, for the three blade prop, uh, I would definitely go with a 40 amp speed controller, and I'll talk about those numbers here briefly. So you've watched, uh, you may have watched uh, another video. Uh, I did a, I did a, a video on this prop, essentially just this prop by itself because, uh, you know, I sort of posed the question, is this the new super prop for park jets? <clears throat> well, I think, excuse me, I just have a drink here. I think it definitely is for me anyway. Uh, again, if I, as I've mentioned before, if I was to have a prop of the year for 2017, it would be the 6x4 EPC gas. Um, RC Plane Pirate from the UK, uh, he recommended it to me after I, I asked him some questions after watching one of his videos because I was just amazed at the the difference in performance compared to a, a 6x4 APC electric in that, um, you know, I'm on, I'm on, whew, sorry, on almost all the motors I've tested it on, I've got better thrust and lower amp numbers, which I think is, you know, that's the, one of the best combinations you can ask for. Super stiff, again, a bit more expensive. It's about $2.39 American, I think. 
uh, plus shipping. So for me with shipping, it's around $3 uh, American by the time the dust settles. But it's for me, it's worth every penny. It's uh, And the nice thing about this prop is that it works well across the range of all the motors that I've tested it with. I've, I'm flying this now on another small quad motor, which I'll do a review on in the future, which is a, a 2780 kV so it's you know really really spinning this thing fast works works super well so 6x4 APC gas uh, 27 and a half amps 788 grams or 27.8 uh, ounces of thrust but I would say that uh, top end um, this one would get the slight nod over this one but uh, um, it's more efficient so just just a great great Prop. I would, if you're looking to to increase the improve the performance on just about any park jet motor that you're running, uh, I, I would certainly look into the six x four EPC gas. So this is the master air screw six x four by three. Um, last year, uh, sort of 2016, this would have been my uh, this was definitely my prop of the year. Um, this this is a 2550 kV motor. I've run this motor or I've run this prop on up to 2600. KV motors. What I find is if you run it over the that, like a 2700 or higher, you get to a point of diminishing returns where you're not getting any more uh, speed or thrust, but you're really, really starting to suck the amps. Uh, so this is the least efficient. Um, again, like I mentioned, it pulls uh, 32 amps, 30, just over 32 amps. So it's actually pushing this motor. This is a 32 amp motor. Uh, so it's pushing this motor right to its limit. But will, what I will say is that, I, again, I flew this a lot in the summer with this prop. I probably have the most flights on this motor with this prop until I just recently discovered the 6x4 EPC gas. Um, and I never, this motor run, even in the summertime, um, you know, I have 28 degrees Celsius, I think was kind of the warmest day I ever flew it on. Never had a problem with this getting hot. You can see, hopefully, and again, on the blog post, I'll have more close-up pictures, lots and lots of uh, of air holes here for cooling um, so yeah good uh, good um, good prop very stiff uh, expensive though uh, cost me about uh, close to by the time I get it shipped to me it's about a nine dollar <coughs> prop which uh, this motor I think only cost me about eleven but um, the lower KV motors uh, pretty pretty decent it does have a different sound it sounds almost closer to an EDF than uh, than um, anything else and like I think I've mentioned in a previous video it, it just has a sort of a softer flight experience um, it almost feels like you have a little bit of expo on your throttle you know so when you when you hammer the throttle it it, it just feels you know like a bit of a it's not as quick and as aggressive obviously it's a three bladed prop so it's not going to spin up as fast as any of the two bladed props and it's darn close to the 6x4 APC gas in top speed but I think you're paying a price in uh, in some prop drag there but uh, um, yeah, so run this a lot, but it, it is an amp hungry, uh, amp hungry prop. Okay, folks, so uh, that's about it for now. So that's the RC Timer 2205 2550. Um, I will post a link also to um, uh, a spreadsheet. Uh, I tested a few other props on the bench, but I didn't test them at the field just because I, you know, the performance on the bench and my experience with those particular props was not that great uh, and I'm also going to have a link I've got several other quad racing motors two other ones that I already have received and I have about uh, six others on the way that I'm going to test plus I'm also going to test I've ordered some three bladed uh, quad racing props uh, that I'm going to test so I'll have a link to that below and in the uh, supporting uh, video so anyway thank you very much for uh, for joining me for another table talk I uh, hope it's been uh, helpful to you and uh, uh, thanks for watching. Blue skies, calm winds to everyone, and park jet noise, the other sound of freedom. Take care, everybody.